There has been a breakout of a lethal Asian disease in two rural communities located in Australia, which both consist of 600 people. The disease has been contained, but it still presents a great threat to those communities. You are a doctor and can create a vaccine to fight the disease, but due to limited resources, you can only create a single type of vaccine per community. For the first community, you face a decision between vaccines that will lead to the following outcomes. Vac A will save 200 people with certainty, Vac B will save all 600 people with a probability of one third, and save no one with a probability of two thirds. As the resident doctor, which vaccine would you choose? For the second community, you face a decision between vaccines that will lead to the following outcomes. Vac C will lead to 400 people dying, and Vac D will lead to no one dying with a probability of one third, and everyone dying at a probability of two thirds. Again, I asked you the same question, which vaccine would you choose? Let's look back at the choices I presented. In round one, you were made to choose between saving 200 people and saving 600 people with a probability of one third. And then in round two, you were made to choose between letting 400 people die and letting no one die with a probability of one third. Those two options might look different, or at least sound different, but they're the same if we deal in absolutes. Observe round two. Letting 400 people die is equivalent to saving 200 people, and letting no one die with a probability of one third is the same as saving everyone with a probability of one third. If people do deal in absolutes, they would have to answer with both A and C, or both B and D, as they are the same in absolute terms. But my choice, when I first answered these questions, and possibly yours too, was most certainly inconsistent with this. That is, I was more attracted to option A and option D. What have we done? made a mistake? Well, in their 1981 paper, The Framing of Decisions and the Psychology of Choice, the paper which is credited with the very creation of the Asian disease problem, Kahneman and Tversky claim that people may not make choices in terms of absolutes, and this is supported by their findings, that 72% of participants chose A in round 1, and 78% chose D in round 2. What do people do instead? Well, Kahneman and Tversky suggest that people form mental representations of questions in terms of gains and losses, and due to a value function that is concave over gains and convex over losses, are risk-seeking over losses and risk averse over gains. This is a feature of prospect theory which I'll cover in a later video. In short, when people observe a prospect, they create something like a zero point. Anything that is positive relative to the zero point is a gain, and anything negative from the zero point is a loss. Further, someone is risk averse when they prefer certainty over risk, and thus require a premium to partake in risky activities. And someone is risk seeking if they prefer risk to certainty, and thus require a premium to remove risk. This means that the way a question is asked can impact the answer that is provided as it impacts impacts whether people evaluate outcomes as gains or as losses. Let us re-observe round one, where you were made to choose between saving 200 people and saving 600 people with a probability of one third. The question is framed in terms of saving lives, and thus, people view each life saved as a gain. Now, being risk averse over such gains means that people are drawn to a concrete option, like option A, where they are guaranteed to save 200 people, over the risky option B, where they may save everyone or no one. This may explain why 72% of participants chose A instead of B, and why I, and possibly you, chose option A as well. Meanwhile, in round two, you made the choice between letting 400 people die and letting no one die with a probability of one third. This question was framed in terms of deaths, and thus, each death is evaluated as a loss. So under Kahneman and Tversky's proposition, we would expect people to be drawn to option D, remembering that they suggest that individuals are risk-seeking over such losses, and this was supported by their findings, with 78% of people choosing the risky option of D over the concrete option C. So, by studying the Asian disease problem and the works of Kahneman and Tversky, we should probably, at the very least, learn one thing, that the way we frame things can have a profound impact on the way decisions are made. That is, the way a question is framed has a significant impact on the answers that will ensue. Further, if we want individuals to be risk-taking, talk in terms of losses, like deaths. And if we want someone to be risk-averse, then talk in terms of gains, like lives saved. Can you come up with any examples of the framing of questions? Or any people in particular who use framing often to get the desired response? Politicians. I hope you enjoyed the video and have an efficient day.